Hello my schoolers, you are welcome to my school channel and I am Abiola. This is the channel where we are tackling the Jam CBT Pastoral Stone for Chemistry for the year 2017. In this video clip, we'll be solving questions 31 to 49. So join me as we jump right on to question 31. The diagram above, part labeled Y is what? Okay, so this is like we described this is an experimental setup to show the preparation the laboratory preparation of sulfur for oxide okay so this is um it's been applied gently we have here we have um, the reagents conch acl and sodium triazosulfate 4 and we have in the conical flux the uh, the part labeled y or the apparatus labeled y it contains conk h2so4 and for this jar that we have here labeled x that is where so2 is being collected so specifically attending to the question at and the, the diagram above y is what concentrated h2so4 tetra also suffix six so the correct option here is option d question 32 Calculate the mass of copper deposited when a current of 0.5 ampere was passed through a solution of copper 2 chloride for 45 minutes in an electrolytic cell, okay, given that copper equals 64 and uh, 1 Faraday equals 96,500, okay, so we just have to recall that the quantity of electric charge Q equals I times T. Okay, so we have um, the current given as 0 0.5, that is still 1 over 2, okay, times 45 minutes. Converting to second, will be 45 times 60. Okay, very well. So we have 2 year 1, 2 year 30, okay. So 30 times 45, that will give us... All right, so columns. So we can see from here that 13,000, sorry, 1,350 columns will discharge X, all right, when 2 times 96,500 will discharge 64 grams of copper. Okay, so we, we are trying to find out that how much or how much mass will 1,350 discharge in grams okay so very well the reason why we have two years is because we know that the valency of copper can be taken as two okay so let's work with this uh, matrix so we'd have two times this one nine three zero 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 okay so let's do the simple operation involved here so we have 64 times this 2 times 96500 times x. Okay, so let's move up here to have a bigger space to work with. So we'll have 1350 times 64 equals 2 times, already we found out that 2 times 96500, that will give us 193,000 times x grams. Okay, dividing both sides by 193. This strikes out. So what we are going to get it will be around around 0.447666 thereabouts. So if we want to approximate, we can approximate to 0.448 grams. So we know that 1350 column of charge would would deposit this mass of copper. We deposit 0 0.0 0 0.448 grams. So Let's go back to our screen and confirm the option that carries our answer. So we can see that option D is the correct option. Question 33. The IUPAC nomenclature of the structure above is what? Okay, so when you study the structure we have here, 
at first you can count how many carbons from here one two three four five so you can correctly assume that this is a pentene structure but actually this is an isomer or one of the isomers of pentene so looking at um, the structure we have here you can see double chain so that tells you that it is, belongs to the alkene family the double bond okay so alkene a l k e n e e okay so looking at the position of the double bond that makes it number one okay so we can correctly say that this is boot one in then looking at the position of the functional group another functional group this attachment that we have here the methyl group okay so we can see that the, the methyl group is attached to the second carbon so that is number two so this makes two methyl one two three four that is boots two methyl boots one in okay or two methyl one butane that doesn't really sound um, professional or um, standardized okay so the correct IUPAC nomenclature of this structure is two methyl boot one e option b is very correct number 34 the reddish brown rust on high on roofing sheet consists of what okay so it consists of or the rust is basically um, a reddish brown hydrated ion 3 oxide okay hydrated so we have this okay ion 3 oxide so the correct option here is option c remember that you can have a simulated jam cbt exam experience using the my school tools all you have to do is to click on the link in the description below it takes you to the Great My School website where there are enough information for you or now you can get the My School mobile app or purchase the My School software with just 1000 Naira. And if you really want to do more, we have better packages for you with discounts on how you can earn just as you learn. Okay, so join me as we tackle question 35. The density of two gases X and Y are 0.5 gram per dm cube and 2.0 gram per dm cube respectively. What is the rate of diffusion of X relative to Y? So recall Graham's law of diffusion, okay, which states that at constant temperature and pressure, the rate of diffusion of a gas is inversely proportional to the square root of its density. Okay, so since we are having two gases, this is what equation or formula we are going to arrive at. Okay, so you can see the relative density of the, um, the relative, the rate of diffusion rather of gas one is inversely proportional to its density. We can see gas two, the same thing. So let's just plot in the values and we have our answer. So we take... Um, the gas X as R1 and the gas Y as R2. Okay, so let's plot in these values properly. All right, so given that the density of gas Y, which is density 2, all right, so we have the density of gas Y as, from the question, as 2.0, or that's just 2 over the gas x is 0 0.5 so 2 divided by 0 0.5 will give us 4 so we would have the square root of 4 and we know that the square root of 4 is 2 so the rate of diffusion of x relative to y is 2 so we just have to go back to our screen and pick the correct option together so we can see and confirm that option c 2.0 is super correct kindly remember that you have to hit the like button click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notifications so you can get informed as soon as the next video clips are released question 36 the carbon atoms on ethane are what okay at first these carbon atoms for all arcane members the carbon atoms are tetrahedrally bonded to the hydrogen and the other carbon atoms okay so and the hybridization is sp3 so it is sp3 hybridized so the correct option here is option b 
Question 37. According to Charles' law, the volume of a gas becomes zero at what? Okay, so if you remember Charles' law, you will recall that volume is directly proportional to temperature. So that implies that as volume increases, so also temperature has been increased. Okay, so when temperature drops, volume drops. Okay, so yeah, when the volume becomes zero, so at what temperature would that be? That would be at zero Kelvin for temperature. So right there, we don't have the units in Kelvin, we have it in Celsius. So that would be minus 273. Because when you are converting from Celsius scale to Kelvin scale, you add up to 273, with 273 rather. So minus 273 plus 273, that gives you zero. Kelvin. So the correct option here is option B. Number 38. An oxide XO2 has a vapor density of 32. Okay, what is the atomic mass of X? So we are asked to find the atomic mass of element X. Okay, so you just have to remember that vapor density equals relative molecular mass of the gas over the molar mass of hydrogen and that is just two so that means that vapor density equals all right relative molecular mass over two which is the molar mass of hydrogen so when we cross multiply that will be two times vapor density because the relative molecular mass of the gas Okay, so we can see from the question that the vapor density is given as 32. So that will be 32 times 2. That gives us 64 equals X plus, we know that for oxygen it is 16 times 2. Alright, so we'll have 64 equals X plus 32. When we send X here, when we send 32 here, rather, it will become 64 minus 32 equals X. 64 minus 32, that still gives us 32. So the atomic mass of element X is 32. So let's go back to our screen and pick out our correct option. So the correct option here is option B for 32. We are right on with um, question 39. The gas that can be collected by downward displacement of air is what? Another word for downward displacement of air is upward delivery. And such gases are hydrogen and ammonia. The other gases we have here, chlorine, sulfur oxide, carbon oxide, uh, can be collected by downward delivery because they are denser than air. So the correct option here is option D for ammonia. Kindly remember that alongside the MySchool team, we have enough solution providers on the MySchool website who are waiting to help you out as soon as you ask your questions right now. All you just have to do is to click on the link in the description below. It takes you to the MySchool website where our solution providers are waiting for you. Okay, so we are tackling question 40 right now. In the laboratory preparation of triozonitrate 5 acid, the nitrogen 4 oxide formed as a byproduct is removed by what? Okay, this nitrogen 4 oxide actually gives the yellow coloration that we see. It is the impurity that comes along with the laboratory preparation of trials on nitrate 5. Okay, it's responsible for that yellow discoloration. So, this is how it can be removed. It can be removed by bubbling air through the acid solution so that you can obtain a pure form of tri nitrate 5 acid. So the correct option here is option D. Dear users, going through our videos and you feel you have better explanations to any of the questions we have tackled, please we would like to know. All you just have to do is to use the comment section below indicate the question number and the explanations or suggestions you would like to share. Question 41. A particle that contains 9 protons, 10 neutrons and 10 electrons is what? Okay, so you would agree with me that the proton number determines the atomic number. So the element atomic number 9 is what? Okay, so we have hydrogen, 
helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon as number 10. So the particle is atomic, has at the atomic number of 9, and that is fluorine, okay? So fluorine has, usually it has 9 electrons, but because it has gained 1 electron, it becomes a negative a ion negatively charged okay so the correct option here is option d a particle that contains nine protons and ten neutrons and ten electrons is a negative ion for option d 42 okay a thing is prepared industrially by what okay that is by the cracking process of gas oil fraction of petroleum and in the laboratory is prepared by reaction between ethanol and excess conch H2SO4 at 170 degrees Celsius, okay? So, uh, we should also know that ethane is the most important alkane. So, the correct option here is by cracking. So, if we are fixing it back to the question presented to us, ethane is prepared industrially by cracking. Option D is the correct option. Question 43. Calculate the amount in moles of a gas which occupies 10.5 dm cube at 680 m and 30 degrees Celsius, okay, given that R equals 0 0.082, okay, so we just have to use the formula for the ideal gas equation, okay, which is given as pressure volume equals number of moles and temperature okay so this is what we have let's just plot in the values we have the pressure at 6 atm all right then we have a um, volume as 10.5 okay then we have the amount in moles which we are asked to look for we have our value of r given as 0 0.082 okay then we have our temperature is given in celsius converting into kelvin that will be 30 plus 273 and that gives us 303 kelvin so let's make n the subject of the formula what do we do divide both sides by rt rt so what we have left is n equals pv over rt all right so we have p at six times v 10.5 over the R is 0 0.082, okay, times our temperature 303, okay. So by the time we carry out this sum, what we're going to have is 2.535 and such goes on the option. So we can roughly have it as 2.536, okay, more. So join me as we go back to our screen and confirm our option. So we are asked to calculate the amount in moles and we got 2.536 as the amount we are looking for. So that means uh, option A is very correct, 2.536. Question 44. If 100 cm cube of oxygen pass through a porous plug that is for 50 seconds, the time taken for the same volume of hydrogen to pass through the same porous plug is what? Okay, so just recall Graham's law of diffusion. We are rates, okay, equals, all right, that is either for density, okay, or the molecular mass. Okay, so this is what we are going to do. So recall that vapor density equals one mole of the molecular one mole of the gas the molecular mass of the gas one mole of it so let's consider the gas oxygen we know that one mole of oxygen is one times one mole all right and we know oxygen is diatomic that is 16 times 2 that is 32 over based on the formula of vapor density over one mole of hydrogen gas okay and we know the molar mass of hydrogen gas is two okay so 32 times two vapor density for oxygen will be 32 over two okay this gives us 16. all right so let's go to hydrogen the vapor density for hydrogen is definitely two okay over two and that still gives us one 
this too is for one mole of hydrogen gas. Hydrogen also is the atomic, okay, which is this two here. Then the molar mass of hydrogen, which is still two. So two divided by two, that gives us one. So we've gotten the vapor density for, this is for oxygen and this is for hydrogen. Okay, so let's move up to the upper side of our board. Therefore, you recall that the time for, this is the time for the oxygen, then the time for the hydrogen, okay? Equals the square root of their vapor density or their densities, whichever one is going to work for you. Okay, so we know that um, this is for oxygen. That's the first gas we considered. And um, so oxygen has, we got 16 for the value. So that'll be 16 over the second gas, which is hydrogen, it's one, okay? So the time T for the oxygen, the, the time it took, okay, to pass through the porous plug was 50 seconds. So we have 50 over T2 equals 16 divided by one, that is still root 16, okay? So we have 50 over T2 equals square root of 16, that is four over one. So when we cross multiply, we would have T2 times 4 equals 50 times 1. Dividing both sides by 4. So we have T2 equals 50 times 1. That is 50 divided by 4. That gives us 12.5. So let's go back to our screen and confirm the correct option. So we see that option B is correct, 12.5 seconds. Question 45. Due to the high reactivity of sodium, it is usually stored under paraffin, toluene, or naphtha, okay? And we just know that once it is exposed to the air, it tarnishes so easily, and it becomes oxidized to sodium oxide. So the best that could be done is to store it under paraffin, toluene or naphtha to prevent that oxidation or being oxidized by the atmospheric gases. So the correct option here is option C for paraffin. Question 46. The fouring of kettles is caused by the presence in water of what? Okay, so what is present in water that causes fouring of kettles? Okay, we should just know this that calcium, hydrogen, trials or carbonate four, okay, is responsible for the temporary hardness of water. Okay, so by the time we we'll eat this and it begins to um, get decomposed, what will be released is calcium trioxocarbonate four, CaCO3. This gradual disposal of this particular um, particular compound here, okay leads to the foreign of kettles. So the correct option is option B, calcium trioxocarbonate 4 leads to or causes the foreign of kettles, okay, in the presence of temporary add water. Option B. Question 47. Water for time supply is chlorinated to make it free from bacteria okay other um, treatment process may include coagulation sed uh, sedimentation filtration disinfection okay even um, iodine is added to prevent the the case of goiter uh, fluorine is added to prevent tooth decay calcium oxide is added to reduce acidity and also to remove hardness okay so Basically, dealing with the question at hand, water for town supply is chlorinated to make it free from bacteria. Option B. 48. We have um, calcium hydroxide, which is also slicked lime, um, plus ammonium chloride, uh, ammonium salt. They are both solid, so they have to be ground to powder, okay, to increase um, surface areas. Okay, this is actually. Uh, the equation for the reaction of the laboratory preparation of ammonia. Okay, so we can confidently say that the unknown gas X is ammonia. Okay, so let's still make our findings. Okay, so we have from here, we have just um, one mole of calcium and still one calcium atom. So right there, we still have 
just one mole and one calcium atom. Here we have um, two hydrogen atoms, okay? We have two times four, we have eight hydrogen atoms. So eight plus two, that gives us 10. So we expected on the product side that we should also have 10 atoms of hydrogen. So already we have two times two, we have four. That means we are still left with six unknown atom particles of hydrogen okay so we have oxygen we have two atoms here all right then over here we have two two moles of it which represent two atoms of it as well so oxygen is balanced calcium is balanced um let's look for chlorine we have two moles of chlorine here that still makes up um, two atom all right so chlorine too is well balanced um, let's look at um, nitrogen for nitrogen here we have two moles of it and we can't find any of nitrogen here. So what is missing now is two moles of nitrogen and six, um, let's say two atoms of nitrogen and two, um, six atoms of hydrogen, okay? Just to be safe. All right, so basically what is missing is N and H and that forms ammonia. So what is missing out here is two moles of ammonia gas, okay? Because two, that will give us two, atomic particles of nitrogen then two times three two moles times three atoms of hydrogen that gives you six atom particles so the correct option here is option b for ammonia question 49 we have um we have x gas plus three moles of y gas to give us two moles of z gas okay if the reaction above takes place at room temperature the free energy will be what okay so at first using your new school chemistry page 248 you'll be able to identify this reaction as the synthesis of ammonia okay so uh, this is definitely nitrogen gas okay plus three moles of hydrogen gas in a reversible reaction to give you two moles of ammonia gas okay so at temperature the reaction is spontaneous okay and uh, it favors the good yield of ammonia all right so at this junction you know free free energy you have to consider the enthalpy change and also temperature and the entropy changing entropy so bringing all of those factors together you will realize that the free energy will be negative so the correct option here is option a at this point we have come to the end of this particular subject for the year 2017 which is chemistry please i will believe you are enjoying this content and you would like us to bring you more of such all you just have to do for us is to hit the like button click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notification so you can get alerts as soon as we upload the next video for this subject.